Greetings ladies and gentlefish and welcome back to another World of Tanks replay featuring some of my games. Hurrah. Um, the theme of this video is just, well, we all get terrible teams. Um, not gonna rant about it too much, but just this idea some people have that, that I don't know, the game picks on them. It's not their fault that they do badly, it's everyone else's and no, get over yourselves. We all have the same teams and in the long run how well you do in the game, or in anything in life, comes down fairly heavily on your shoulders. You are the constant factor in all the things happening around you. You are the thing that gets to influence it. So, with that in mind, we're going to have some replays in which I have some not stellar teams. Let's, let's go with it that way. Um, now I could show you some replays in which I also have a bad performance with those bad teams. If any of you want to see that sort of thing, um, you're going to, you know, you can just catch a stream and you'll see that from time to time happen, but it's not very entertaining for a YouTube video. So these results are going to be relatively good from a personal perspective, it's just the teams themselves are kind of going to suck. So we're kicking off, we're here on Serene Coast and we're in the T44-100 Soviet Tier 8 Premium medium tank. Um, it was a mission reward tank a little while back. Uh, come up to the classic medium tank position, take a couple of snapshots at a KV-85, none of which achieve anything. I guess we don't take any damage either in return, but I mean the, the T-44 honestly overall is a deeply mediocre machine. There we go, there's four shots wasted at that KV-85 for no damage in return. Scoreline is 0-0. Zero, zero. So we're going to go somewhere else, try and do something else, see if we can get a different angle, maybe be actually rewarded with some damage, who knows, time will tell. Uh, Type 64 down there, T34-100, no, no, no joy, it's a shame. Um, and I feel I should point out at this um, at stage, if memory serves, this is, so I won't have sixth sense in this replay because I'm trying to train up a new crew for, hello Mr. Roney, for my um, Object 430 version 2, when I eventually buy it. Um, but I've decided to keep the Object 416, so this is training up a new crew um, for the 430 version 2. Of course, armor piercing round penetrates and then APCR doesn't. Go figure. What are you going to do, eh? Probably should have shot this guy in the axle at that point. That was a bad shot unfortunately, and I decide, screw this, let's go somewhere else. T-3485 is not in the best position. I don't think he was intending to be a pain. It's just one of the things that happens. And so we go somewhere else. Churchill 7. Shot goes low. Come down the hill, and we take a shot from an Udez who nukes our engine. Not a particularly great uh, moment there. Scoreline is 1-4 for our team, by the way. So, coming around here, Type 64 to our left, oh, he's dead, um, T-34-100 over to our right, oh, we've got him in the rear, aim it in just to try and make sure that, you know, we're actually going to pick the kill up there, and move onwards. Got this Skoda T-25 with us as well, it'd be really nice if we can take out this KV-85 and the Oni. Do have to be a little bit careful about the Udez, we don't want to get shot in the flank or the rear as we do this, but I figure with the scoreline at 3-7 it's worth trying this. Tiger P takes out the Oni, which helps, and worth trying to get rid of these guys and evening the score up a little bit. We spot the Udez and take out the KV-85. Gonna keep moving, don't want to get shot. Um, and, well, just look at the minimap. We're going to need to make it back to the base in fairly short order. Scoreline is 5-9 at this point. The enemy team have essentially overrun all the base defence. We're a top tier tank, so we're going to go back and try and see what we can do. At this point, whether we win or not is kind of, to a certain extent, in the hands of the enemy. It's in their court. If they wanted to, they could basically cap this out for a win. So in order to lose this, they're going to have to make a mistake. Scoreline is 5-9. Um, and I wouldn't blame them for not capping, you know, for coming and trying to kill us. I totally understand 
whether it ends up being the right or wrong decision, I would totally understand. We managed to put a shot into that AMX 1375. Hopefully that's going to keep our Udes alive a little bit longer. And I feel I should point out, when I was playing this match, I really wasn't in the mood to be dealing with teammates and trying to keep them alive. I'd already had a number of games where, in attempting to keep my teammates alive, I had died for what ended up being very little gain because those particular teammates were not very reliable. Nonetheless, we managed to take out the T3485M there. He becomes kill number three. And now we've got an AMX M449 and an Oni. Don't really want to deal with the AMX at the moment, so we're going to be looking toward the Oni. We can at least penetrate this guy in the side with relative ease. His traverse is terrible, and the Udez is working him over as well. That's a HE round from him there. These side skirts on the tank will basically mean that the HE rounds from the Oni are going to struggle to penetrate and we're able to pick up the kill on him. Would like to go and deal with the AMX, but our base is being capped. Really need to do something about that, otherwise it's academic what we do about the AMX anyway. We're going to lose. Heavy tank number 6 and AMX 1375. Don't quite have the gun depression to do this optimally, but we poke our turret over the ridge line. Bounce a shot from heavy tank number 6, put one into him, manage to reset his cap counter. Bounce another shot from the heavy tank. Number six, take out the AMX 1375, and then take out the Japanese Heavy for our fifth and sixth kills. Scoreline is now 12-11. Our team is actually winning this. We might be able to pull this out of the bag. Mm, well, you have to bear in mind the T-3485 and Tiger P up by the enemy base are players who, when it was obvious from the minimap that the enemy were going to be swarming around our base, decided not to come back and help us defend, so I'm not sure how much stock we should put in those guys. AMX M4 here, Liberté, uh, myself and a Skoda T25. Now, with hindsight, perhaps I should have taken this guy on head to head so that our Skoda T25 could take him on from behind. But as I said at the time, I really wasn't feeling very trustful of allies, and I thought the Skoda would survive a little bit longer rather than trying to ram the AMX to death and when you're trying to ram to death a heavy tank that's two tiers higher than you, that's probably not going to end particularly well. Put a shot into the side of the AMX and managed to secure our seventh kill on him. And that leaves an Udez and a Lerva. Now this is an... Oh, by the way, you know that Tiger P and the T-3485 that were up by the enemy base? Yeah, they were massively helpful, weren't they? So, this is an awkward situation. The Lerva, I don't know how much health either of these guys are on, but I don't... The, the T-34... Sorry, 44-100 is a deeply mediocre tank. I don't really have the firepower to outshoot either of them. I don't have the armor. I don't have the view range or the camouflage. The main advantage I have over these guys is, I guess, mobility. So, trying to... Um, go somewhere else. Trying not to fight them. I'm, not, I'm trying not to just stay where I was and just fight those guys, because then the two of them can come at me at once and that just makes it a really icky situation. So I go up the one line, you've got this ridge running up the one line which means you have the high ground, which is pretty nice. I'm not expecting to cap this or anything, um, I'm more expecting to hopefully try and catch someone unawares on the hop, and well if that Udez is indicating the Lerva has 1450 hit points this is going to be a rather difficult win. As it is, we spot the Lerva with about 450 health remaining. So, what I'm trying to do at this point is come up behind the Lerva whilst also be being very cautious about that Udez. I don't want him coming up behind me and generally wrecking my day. So, we're going to start driving back around um, and, with any luck, try and deal with that Lerva. And the Lerva and the Udez are going to do something I was not expecting here. Spoiler alert. Uh, which is going to be slightly problematic. I'm not just belting it down here because I don't want to be caught out and ambushed. And uh, the T-3485 is annoying me with his pointless map spamming of every blasted sector. And it's just distracting and annoying and I want him to stop. Um, I'm just trying to hunt these guys down, hopefully one at a time. So... I think let's go and deal with the Udes, and then, oh, someone's in the, oh, two of them are in the cap circle. Oh. And suddenly we've got 45 seconds left to reset the base. Okay, so I come the other side of the train tracks, 
on the basis that then I can hopefully use the train tracks as a little bit of cover and minimise the amount of my tank I have to expose but this is looking decidedly dicey, I am running out of time here. So in order to try and spot these guys as quickly as possible, come over the train tracks and I just have to belt it toward the base at this point and hope that I can get at least a reset in. But this is a really icky situation, nine seconds left. And these guys are probably going to get the drop on me to be honest. And then there's these little ridge lines that mess me up. And I put a shot into the Lerva just as they hit 100 on the cap counter. And that's it. The enemy team end up capping this game out. Really kind of annoying. Given the hit points that the Udez and the Lerva ended up being on, this is a fight that maybe I could have won. But it would have been very difficult. Um, and as it is, we take that shot from the Lerva, which is really awkward. I've never really appreciated before how these little undulations on this sec section of ground leading up to the capture circle... If you're quite a low profile tank like the T44-100, they actually make it quite difficult to uh, get shots on people and to, to actually get vision on them. Uh, maybe I would have been better off sticking the other side of the train tracks, but eh, c'est la vie. As it is, I run out of time either way. So, let's go and have a look at the results for this one. So, that ended up being enough for First Class Mastery, Fire for Effect, Master Gunner, Duelist, Bruiser, Defender Medal. It did actually give me the Defender Medal for getting that hit on the Lerva. So I guess it counted me as having achieved those base defence points, even though it didn't actually count me as having achieved those base defence points. The team had already, the enemy team had already capped out at that point. A little bit weird, but whatever. And also the Top Gun Medal, I was one off of Radley Walters in the end. 2,643 damage done, 7 kills, 699 base experience. Shout out for the Udez on our team, 3,940 damage from him. And uh, he was a help against the Oni, for example. It's just a shame that he was forced into an engagement where he couldn't use his camouflage. Um, and at that point, the Udez is a very flimsy machine. Um, and uh, not an ideal engagement from him. But shout out for him anyway as being quite a useful ally. 23 shots fired, 18 hits, 14 penetrations for that damage. Most of which was from fairly close range. 6 hits received, 4 penned, 2 did not. For 220 damage blocked by our armour, you can't really expect much from the armour on that tank. In fact, more importantly, the fact that we had the side skirt stopped the Oni penetrating us with his HE rounds. 3 enemy vehicles spotted, 8 damage, 7 destroyed, 122 assistance damage, and it gave us all 100 base defence points. Travelled 57 kilometres. it's not usual that you have to travel that far in any tank. In the end, uh, we fired 2, maybe 3 APCR rounds, and ended up with a 30,000 credit profit, despite that being a defeat. So, there's the first game of this video and well yeah it's gonna go from the sublime to the ridiculous I'm afraid so let's go and have a look at another game second game then and we are driving everyone's tier favorite tier 6 tank destroyer the flat panzer <laughs> sarcasm aside this is actually a machine that I really rather enjoy um, despite the fact that a lot of people don't like it it's received some buffs since the the gory days shall we say but even back in the gory days I kind of enjoyed this tank but there we go Never mind. Uh, this is another game where we are top tier. Uh, so it's a tier 6 match in a tier 6 TD. We're here on, I can't remember the name of the map, Steps. There we go. It's an encounter game. So we are going to go over towards the capture circle because ultimately mm, that's the bit that really matters. Um, so, yeah. Flat Panzer, I do have a review of this tank on my channel if you are interested. The review is a little old now, but honestly, the game hasn't changed enough for it to be outdated. The, the thing that's really changed, I, I guess, is since I made that review, the 88mm gun on this tank has received a penetration buff. So we're now looking at 145 average penetration with armour piercing rounds and 194 with APCR. And really, that's meant that there's not... I guess it the 88 has secured its place as the top gun on this tank. I mean, I always felt that it was, but I know some people didn't like it, and so they gritted their teeth with the 75 and, and bared it. Uh, okay, so we're making our way over here. What have we got coming with us? Panzer 4H, VK3002M, OI Experimental, T50, driven off way ahead. Um... And there's sort of an A43, an IKV, and a Panzer IV-H kind of in the vicinity. 
Now, there aren't that many heavy tanks on either team, two in each case. We've got an OI and an OI Experimental. The enemy team have a T-150 and... what else have they got? Oh yeah, VK-3001H. Um, they're presumably going to be over on the one line. Advancing over here, our T-50 finds an IKV-65-2 and a Cromwell. And we just start working this IKV over. Someone kills him. Sorry, not a Cromwell, a Crusader. My apologies. It's me getting my British medium tanks mixed up. Very disappointing. And we make him kill number one. And we're up to 600 damage done already, which is the same as we have hit points. 220 alpha on a gun with about a four and a half second reload at tier six does kill people very quickly, providing you can penetrate them. Um, and that, that really is... It's sort of some of why I like this tank. It's not your typical tank destroyer. You don't sit at the back of the map and just shoot people with impunity from a great distance. One into the front of the leopard, and you have a little bit of armour so you can bounce some people here and there. It's not quite an assault gun, but uh, it's sort of somewhere in between. Flub that shot, but trying not to give anyone a chance to aim at us. Leopard is getting shot up anyway, and is dead. Scoreline is 3-4. Have that punt at the T-3485. We don't manage to actually damage him. But he's getting worked over anyway and our T-50 is spamming the map like it's going out of fashion. Because, you know, as he's dead, that's clearly the most helpful thing he can do for his team. So coming around here, just trying to see who else might be around and who else I might be able to kill, basically. You know, the more we can thin the numbers, then the... Um, better chances we have of winning. So we get some assistance damage as the T-3485 meets his maker and it'd be really nice if we could kill this T-67. With hindsight perhaps I should be loading a high explosive round here because he's got about 250 health left which means one AP round isn't going to do the job and he actually managed just to penetrate me with one shot. Um, we bounce that shot from him though and one more round to kill this guy and as it is, as I say, we bounce the other shots we take one more penetration though, so I really probably should have loaded high explosive to kill him as then, with average damage rolled, he would have died, assuming I penetrated, and even if I hadn't penetrated, it should have done enough damage that a second round could have been armor piercing to kill him. Yeah, I should take a little bit more HE on this tank actually. 88mm HE at tier 6 isn't too bad, 44 pen, 270 damage. Anyway, I didn't, so I ended up taking probably one more shot from him than uh, I strictly needed to, which is a bit of a mistake, but there we go. Tank destroyers have been spotted away in the distance, so let's see if we can thin their numbers. See? 220 Alpha versus a Tier 5 tank destroyer. He doesn't last very long, does he? So that's the SU-85 dead. Flat Panzer is next. Drops to three kills, by the way. That one bounces. I think it hit his gun mantlet, which is slightly irritating that these things happen. That one, low damage roll, only 200. And that one is very unlikely to penetrate. While we've been doing that, however, the rest of our team has dissolved. There's only the three of us left. Myself, the OI Experimental, and a Panzer IV-H. We're up to 1,510 damage, 320 damage blocked by our armour, and 310 assistance damage. T-67 is probably going to come around and be a nuisance at some point. Speak of the devil and we'll miss him. You do have to get used to the shell velocity on this gun. It is not fantastic. And so sometimes, and if you haven't been playing this tank solid for a bit, leading the shot can be a pain. We do manage to pick up the kill on the T-67 eventually. He becomes our fourth kill. But landing that first shell would definitely have been um, desirable. Cheeto is taking a bit of a pummeling and has decided to back off. One shell into the Cheeto should finish him off. There's a Sherman away in the distance. We don't really want to get derped by him. So we kill him for kill number five. And come around the corner. Cheeto. And we actually bounce off him, despite the fact that his armor is pretty terrible. That was a little bit unlucky. Might have hit his gun mantlet, I guess. We take one round from the Cheeto before executing him for kill number six. Scoreline is 9-12. We're down to just over a third of our hit points remaining. There's a VK now approaching our team. Presumably the OI Experimental and the Panzer IV H between them should be able to kill a not full health VK. And indeed they do, though they take a bit of a pasting for their trouble. And there is the 
flat panzer from earlier on and unfortunately he high rolls he rolls 231 when the alpha on the gun is 220 to kill us there um, and our OI experimental dies to enemy artillery and then the flat panzer manages to kill our panzer 4h and I'm afraid that is the match another defeat there we go what are you gonna do sometimes so let's go and see uh, how things ended up panning out so that was enough for ace tanker bruiser fire for effects top gun and high caliber in the flat panzer there 1902 damage done six kills 644 base experience and if you look at the rest of our team it was not particularly impressive the OI experimental managed 1100 damage um, which is more noteworthy for the fact that he's in a tier 5 and still managed more than a thousand damage which was more than most of well than any of our other tier 6s could achieve shout out to the enemy T67 1448 damage from him nicely done and really the difference between the two teams was just they were more consistent we had two guys who did more than a thousand damage the enemy had three um, and then the damage just really falls off and one two three four five ten of our team failed to do more than 500 damage which is frankly just pitiful but there we go 20 shots fired 15 hits 12 penetrations a um, number of those shots weren't fully aimed 10 hits received four penetrated six did not for 450 damage blocked by our armor one enemy vehicle spotted nine damage six destroyed 310 assistance damage and with a standard account 17,000 credits uh, profit into the bargain but there we go that was the match um, there's one more to show you in this video of well a tale of unfortunate events or or something like that last game of this video then I promise and we are driving the M6 A2 E1 sometimes affectionately referred to as the mutant this is the tier 8 premium or a tier 8 premium American heavy tank tier 8 match so we are top tier if you will but it is a completely tier 8 match there are no lower tier tanks no tier 6s to bully or anything like that the mutant has good frontal armor um, kind of mediocre gun does get limited matchmaking however uh, so it doesn't see tier 10 matches is as tall as the Empire State Building with sides armored in glass it is still an M6 at the end of the day. They might have up-armoured the front of it, given it a weird turret and a larger gun, but, you know, get it in the side or something and it's still an M6. So, going over towards the 1 and 2 lines initially, um, and at some point it's going to cross my mind that, good lord, what on earth are they doing? If you have a look at the mini-map, a lot of our team is coming over here, and we have a Tiger II and a Ferdinand to defend the other flank. Now initially, I was thinking, right, fine. So we push through this flank and then go back to defend the base. But the problem with that is that if we have a look at the enemy team composition, they do have a couple of tank destroyers. And it's entirely possible that by the time the friendly team have kind of battered their way through that one line corridor, those TDs are just going to be in waiting and going to shoot us up massively. One of those tank destroyers is an ISU-152, and the other is an Udez-03, both of which are quite nasty machines, but more on those guys later on. There's already, by the way, a WZ-111 just marauding around our spawn point. What the hell is this? Why does... how does he have the balls to do this? And also, I mean, oh god, there's no one to stop him. So he's engaging a super purging. I say no one to stop him, very few people to stop him. He's engaging a super purging. And we come to help the super purging out, and the first thing we manage to do is fail to penetrate this guy's side armor. Hoorah! And then the super purging takes a big hit because the UDE, the WZ, sorry, is faster than he is, despite being in a heavy tank. And at this point, if at all possible, we'd really like to just keep this guy tracked here, but you have to bear in mind the reload on this gun is not fantastic. But then again, apparently, this guy doesn't have a repair crew, so there's that. Scoreline is 4-0. This has gotten off to a good start. Come on, guys, you can do this. I believe in you. So, managed to take out, well, someone else got the kill, but we managed to deal with that WZ. And the Super Pershing, to give credit to him, was there to try and stop him and thanked us for the assistance. Well, thanked us, collectively, those who assisted him 
for the assistance, which is fair enough. I respect that. AMX CDC up on the hill. We'll put a shell into his face, maybe try and dissuade him from being up there, because my problem here is if I try and move around to go and help out the Ferdinand, I expose my side armour to all of this good stuff, and I'm going to get shot up an awful lot. And there's a Lorraine who's moving over to try and... Uh, kill our Ferdinand. They have won the hill convincingly, of course. I mean, there was basically no one there to prevent them from winning it. And our Super Pershing, whilst trying to help the Ferdinand, has got shot in the side from that T-34, and that leaves him in a decidedly uncomfortable position, and our Super Pershing has been taken down, unfortunately. Side of the turret on the T-34, I would love to take that shot, but this gun leaves a little to be desired. Uh, it's like using one of the Soviet 122 derpy guns, but without the derp. So, yeah. And the problem with that T-34 is, whilst our frontal armour is good, he has, for a tier 8, quite a lot of penetration. He's one of those guys who might actually be able to challenge our armour from the front without any weird angling going on. We have a go at shooting the IS-6, but no joy, nothing comes from it. Bounce the T-34 shell up. The Ferdinand has died as well, by the way, in case you weren't paying attention. Hull of the T-34, there we go, and we also have a Lorraine over here to worry about. The KV-4 has come over to help, he was the guy who picked up the kill on the WZ, so it's nice to have him along for the ride. And we'd really like to take out this T-34, that would be fantastic. There we go, um, and our team is 8-7 up. There is still a Lorraine over to our right hand side of course, who we have to worry about, there he is don't want to get clipped by him. He's got a 4-shell 100mm autoloader. That's 1,200 damage he pumps out. Sure, he's not going to kill us. He shouldn't kill that KV-4 unless he rolls very high, but it's still a lot of damage we don't want to take. He seems to be moving in to do something about the KV-4, though, so I am going to move up and try and help our KV out. He had the balls to come and try to, to see what was happening and to come and try and help us defend against the the enemy coming down from the hill so I would really like to try and keep this guy alive if possible because clearly he isn't a complete and utter scrub he's using the stock turret unfortunately is not fully upgraded but he does at least have the top gun so there's that coming around here I am rather cautious or rather wary that if someone is um, up on the top of the hill they can shoot me Having said that, I am fairly confident in my frontal armour, although I've got my turret pointed over to the side, which is perhaps not the best call. But it appears there's no one up there in a position to shoot me, because I would have spotted them by now. IS-6 seems to be exchanging shots with our KV-4. Lorraine has gone up and is getting shot at by the Carnarvon. Be really nice. Well, okay. He kills the Carnarvon, but the Scorpion G kills him, so fair enough. I was going to say, it'd be really nice if someone could just kill that Lorraine. Scoreline is still even at 9 kills to 9. Loading an APCR around here as I am expecting to come across that IS-6. And the IS-6's armour is rather formidable. 200 penetration, while not terrible. It's not particularly great and can be dicey to use against that. For some reason, both the IS-6 and the Type 59 were firing high explosive. Not really sure why. And... We managed to kill the IS-6 and push the Type 59 back. Glad I didn't take any tank destroyer shots in the side while I was doing it, because this can be a slightly dicey situation. Type 59 has now committed to getting the hell off of this hill. He doesn't want to fight me, fair enough. Means I might be able to shoot him as he backs off, which would be nice. I over-angle there, and he puts a shot into... not sure where... He puts a shot, yeah, straight through my frontal plate. Then again, he's firing APCR. Go figure. Can't really blame him too much. Uh, I mean, the frontal armor of this tank is pretty good. And he does take out my driver, which is irritating, but not the end of the world. I put him back in, and we bounce that shot from him. Now, thinking about trying to chase down that Type 59, but this is a slightly dicey situation as, yeah, there are going to be tank destroyers up there somewhere. So we take a hit there from the Udez. He's probably reloading. The reload on the Udez is not fantastic. We take a punt at trying to, to put one into him, but no such joy. And the ISU-152 is also up there. We do not want to take a shot from him as that would make bad things happen. 
Trying to put some damage in on the Udez. There we go. Put a shot in. Back off. But the Udez kills our KV4 ally. Score is 10-11. And I'm just going to pause this right here so you can appreciate the situation. At the moment, I am fighting a Type 59 and there are two tank destroyers in the background. So it's kind of a 1 versus 3 situation. We've got a Scorpion over there on about half health. T-34 over there on about half, half health. And I don't know how much health the other T-34 is on. But let's just keep an eye on this. So, the Udez is no longer trying to shoot us, but we are definitely occupying his attention. We put another shot into him, i.e. he's not shooting anyone else. So, this is at the very least effectively a one-on-two engagement. We lose our track there, and the Lerva's over here as well. So, Udez, Type 59, and Lerva specifically are occupied with me. The ISU-152, you can argue that he can shoot other places as well. But at the very least, this is a 1 versus 3 engagement. Which frees up the other 3 tanks on our team to engage the remaining 2 tanks on the enemy team. A T-25 pilot and an ISU-152. So in my head, I'm thinking, okay, as long as I can hold these guys up. Because I'm in a slightly dubious situation. I can't really run away from this. But as long as I can hold these guys up. The rest of our team should be able to push through, deal with the T25 pilot, etc. And, and it's all going to be good. This should be... I'm, I'm actually confident at this point that this should be a win. Bounce a shot from the Lerva. Type 59 is aiming his shot. Aims it a bit too long as he allows me to put one into him. Um, Lerva, we bounce another round from him. Going for the commander's hatch on the Lerva. There we go. He's going to turret hug me. And he is actually successfully pushing me back here. Which is a little bit of a problem. Bit of an inconvenience. Type puts another shell into me. And now the Lerva is blocking my gun. Which is a bit of anno an annoyance. Bit of a problem. Um, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to deal with this. So, okay. Right, fine. And the Udez has come up. So let's put one into him. He's left on 10 health. We're taking a lot of damage here. And then the ISU actually manages to put a shot in to finish us off. So, I had the attention of the ISU, the Type 59, the Udez, and the Lerva. There was one tank left on the enemy team, occupying the attention of our other three teammates. And they're still sitting in the same positions as they were before. They haven't actually done anything. Now, at this point, um, I, if memory serves, <laughs> I got up and went and got myself a drink or something, rather than seeing how this game would pan out. I expected them to kill the T-25 pilot. I've left all the guys over here on pretty low health. The ISU-152 is the only real problem, and he's in one of those god-awful boosting locations. Good lord, I hate them. Um, now, unfortunately, because of that, I didn't switch camera positions. So what I am going to do instead, so you can't see the battle from the perspective of the T-34 and the Scorpion, I'm afraid. Apologies about that. That's kind of the way it is, though. So I'm going to speed this along and see what happens. As it is, the Type 59 kills our Scorpion. The ISU kills one of our T-34s. Our remaining T-34 does eventually manage to kill the T-25 pilot. And then the Type 59 kills him as well. And I'm just left in bewilderment. They sat there when they had a numerical advantage and then advanced when they didn't. It was rather frustrating. But anyway, let's have a look at the post-game stats of this one. So that was enough for my ace tanker in the mutant. Fire for effect, bruiser and a high caliber medal which was uh, enabled me to get that ace tanker of course. 4,388 damage done, 2 kills, 839 base experience, um, notable contributions, I guess, uh, Primo Victoria, over 2,000 damage, nicely done, and 3 kills, one of the T-34s managed over 3,000 damage, uh, the Scorpion, over 2,000, the Carnarvon, over 2,000, though he died some time ago. Um, I must confess, we have a T-34 down there towards the bottom on zero kills. Uh, the KV-4, wherever he is, he only did 145 damage. Um, but at least he was able to recognise that things were going badly from the minimap and he came back to help. He was not fully upgraded. Okay, no, that's not a particularly good damage count. But at least he saw what was going on. 
on the enemy team. That tight 59 ended up having a really good game, um, despite the fact that I was distracting him for quite a while. T25 pilot, 3,000 damage. Lorraine, 40 tons, 3.3k damage. ISU, 2.8. And if you look at the top tanks on each team, there's not too much to choose from. I was the highest damage dealer from either team, but apart from that, we had one, two, three, four, five people in total who did over 2,000 damage. The enemy team had one, two, three, four people in total who did over 2,000 damage. But we then have a massive drop off. Those five people were also the same five people to do more than a thousand damage and if you look at the enemy team the damage is more spread throughout the team. The enemy team was just all round, they performed consistently better. Unfortunately with a few exceptions our team just wasn't really up to snuff. 19 shots fired, 16 hits, 14 penetrations for that damage count, most of which was from basically point-blank range. 14 hits received, 6 penned, 8 did not, for 1,780 damage blocked by our armour, and we were bouncing quite a few gold shells there. 8 enemy vehicles damaged, 2 destroyed, 962 assistance damage. With um, all that said and done, in the end, bearing in mind I think we fired one APCR round, we made a 67,000 credit profit, and a good amount of experience, despite the fact that it was a defeat. So, there we go. A trio of games for you, and I'm not trying to blow my own trumpet and say, oh my god, I'm awesome, wasn't my team so naff, blah 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 blah. The point is, of this video, just remember, when you're having a, a terrible set of games or whatever, we all get bad teams, we all get good teams. Um, we all have to put up with both, for better or for worse. You just try and make the best of it that you can, and sometimes you'll manage to turn that game into a win, Sometimes you won't. Sure, I showed you a collection of games here where couldn't really overcome the odds in the end. But, like I said, sometimes you will manage to overcome it, providing that you actually try. If you don't bother, then it kind of becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed uh, that video. If you did, by all means feel free to catch some of my others and or subscribe to my channel. And as ever, I wish you very happy hunting on that battlefield. Ciao, ciao.